Welcome to another episode of Dorkish Dish. I'm your host, <laughs> Alex. I'm Pete. And I am very excited to talk about the latest episode of The Chilling Adventures of Dorcas. And actually, you know what? Excited is the wrong word. I'm sad, Pete. I'm very sad. sad. Our Queen Dorcas, what are they doing with her this season? I don't know, but I tell you what, she was in a lot of scenes. That is true. Sure, she was a statue, but she looked great. Mm -hmm. And she was in a lot of scenes. Yes, and her presence was felt, and she was pushing the action forward, and really, that's all we could ask. I feel like, you know, what wasn't said but was very much a part of this whole episode Mm -hmm. is, like, it was really, like, what would Dorcas do? You know what I mean? Like, that was really what the title should have been. Good old WWDD. (laughs) <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Double W, double D. That's uh, that's oh, what my boy. shirt says. That's what your shirt says. That's <laughs> what our bracelets say. Yeah. Uh, and our socks, confusingly. But, you know, you really got to remember the stuff. It's very important. Uh, now, we are going to be recapping. Uh, you mentioned it has a different title, which, weird choice. But Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, Part 3, Chapter 25, The Devil Within. And Season 3, okay, Chapter 25. Okay, we're not going to do this. We're not. We we have a few simple rules here on Dorcas Dish, yep. this podcast that we do and always do. Yep. Uh, and one of those rules is no fighting. We're in this together, okay. Pete. All right. All right. So we're just going to skip by the whole, it's definitely part three, not season three debate, and just move on from there and not even worry it's about it. It's very big of you to move on from the, it's season three, not some part bullshit. You know what I mean? I really appreciate the fact that we're not fighting. And that's exactly when I think about what would Dorcas do, Dorcas mm-hmm. would say it's part three, not season three, and then just move on with the recap and go from there. <laughs> you so- know what? I'm so glad you brought up Dorcas <laughs> because as a statue, she is so uh-huh. powerful and such a great figure sure. that you can tell by her not saying anything. What she's saying is you're wrong. It's season three. But it, It's interesting because uh, what statues don't like is different seasons because it weathers at them. It, it rubs <laughs> away at their stone skin, uh, right, but they do right. like uh, parts because they have different parts that are coming out of their statue bits. What? I don't know. That's, I lost the track there. Uh, let's yeah. jump into the recap because there's a ludicrous amount of stuff we need to review. Oh my god! Before what we get an into this app. episode. So Nick Scratch, the bad boy, has overdosed on drugs given to him by Lucifer in exchange for letting the former king of hell go from his imprisonment in the basement of the Academy of Dark Arts. Probably a lot of stuff you need to understand for that, but let's just keep pushing forward. Uh, <laughs> Nick Scratch also, we should note, has been pretty rude to his girlfriend, Sabrina. Uh, oh, yeah. Meanwhile, a bunch of pagans who are secretly old gods in disguise are also and are also dirty carnies have been terrorizing. <laughs> I mean, they are. Let's be honest. Dude, That's- I mean, I don't know, man. You know, you can't call our all carnies dirty. I'm but not. These people specifically were. They do fit that description a little bit. I'm one hundred again in the spirit of Dorcas. I am agreeing with you. These. Carnies are dirty carnies. They've been terrorizing the coven of witches we know and love, including driving Agatha mad and uh, knife to the gut here, turning Dorcas into a statue. Uh, They've also given the coven, which is rapidly losing its power now that they've forsaken Lucifer, three days to join or die. And not in the fun Ben Franklin way, but in the legit join us or you're going to die kind of way. Um, Kind of like when a parent says, I'm going to count to three. Right. You know what I mean? Can I tell you a little trick about parenting? Yeah. You never get to three. Really? Yeah. And when you finally get to three, that's Mm -hmm. when you're like, wow, you've really grown up. You can leave the house now. Wow. That's a parenting tip right for you, Pete. Take that one straight to the bank. Uh, For you and your little cat, Dorcas. Uh, (laughs) So... Meanwhile, Sabrina's human friends are having trouble of their own. Harvey is freaking out a little bit because he's not totally sure that he wants to have sex yet. Uh, But that's okay because his girlfriend, Roz, has also turned into a statue. And as we have all discovered on occasion, it is very hard to have sex with a statue. Come on, man. Are you saying, come on, man, it's easy to have sex? What is your point? No, I'm saying keep it clean for Dorcas, man. All right, let's. Keep it clean for Dorcas. Oh, right. Uh, KC, the number 4D, is the other yep. bracelet I have on my other wrist. So, yeah, yeah. Well, you're right. I Look at both that. wrists. What? 
you got to look at both wrists sometimes, man. As Dorcas always likes to say, there's two wrists. Yeah. Uh, their other friend, Theo, is dating a guy named Robin, and nobody realizes yet, though we get into this this episode, that Robin is working with the pagans and is actually Robin Goodfellow. And mm-hmm. then there's Sabrina, who forsook. I think this is, I kept going back and forth between forsaken, forsaked, and forsook. I think it's forsook, right? I don't think so. You don't think so? You're yeah, an English not, professor, I, Pete. I didn't go to Cornell, so, you know. Oh, okay. Well, this is more of an Ithaca College type pronunciation oh. for this word. Uh, she uh, gave up taking her father's throne and captured him in the body of raging asshole Father Blackwood, who also freed Nick from hell in exchange for becoming a f- queen of hell. However, a sexy dirt dude named Caliban challenged her rule, and now they're on a quest for three unholy regalia. Caliban stole the first ones from Sabrina, which she was pretty upset about, but Lilith, Lucifer's former queen who betrayed him and is now advising Sabrina, thought it would come down to best two out of three anyway, which by the end of the episode we know is pretty prophetic. Other things you should know, Ambrose, Sabrina's cousin, captured a weird eldritch god egg that had something to do with time moving differently from Father Blackwood. <coughs> Excuse me. He did that with Prudence, who is Agatha and Dorcas's sister. Also, Hilda is engaged to Gaeta from Battlestar Galactica. And last episode, one of the pagans cursed her after Hilda called spiders pets. The pagan yeah. was pretty upset about that. Uh, and there have been a few other witches we've met over the course of the show that come into play this episode, including Gorilla, who lives in the mountains and eats babies. And I think this was her name. I think she's Madame Laveau, which is the classic voodoo priestess. Uh, Prudence and Ambrose, regardless, met this priestess in New Orleans. The first episode, we get to see her here. So lots of things going on. Pete, was I, it? I feel like this is our regular check in at the beginning of these episodes. Was it too much? Have we reached critical mass? I was. Uh, I I thought it was uh, so much when they were like, "Yeah, time egg." No time to explain <laughs> that because also there's Satan residue, right? And I was like, "Wait, all right, I this is too much." You. There's no need to have the Satan jizz that look like Venom. There was no need for that. You there know is I mean? always like, need for Venom. And I do hope next episode, Sabrina is going to jump into a lobster tech. That's what I'm billing for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do love the fact that just to jump into the episode proper, there are so many things going on that at least the first five to 10 minutes of the episode are spent with all of the characters catching each other up and the yeah. audience up on everything that's happened. Even yeah. though it's a binge show, even though technically you probably just watched that previous episode they're like all right i know you watched this for an hour we're gonna explain it anyway let's get into <laughs> it's it it's a lot we gotta break it down and because what we have to cover in this episode is completely more insane than what just happened yeah i i will say from my perspective it's working mm-hmm. for me like it is so packed and it's so over the top and there are so many things happening at once but At the same time, it's really ramping up the danger to an insane degree. Like on one end of the spectrum, which we've talked about a lot, you get Sabrina, who is very casual about everything. That's what's driving me crazy is she has been doing so much and there's been so many insane things thrown at her that she has no choice but just be super cash about everything. And it's kind of driving me insane. But what this is doing and what we get a lot here, particularly with the Nick and Sabrina storyline, is it's pushing her to a breaking point. Like you could see, and this is coming through with Kieran Shipka's performance, that... Sabrina is casual about everything. She's like, whatever, this is fine. We can handle whatever comes at us. And so they're putting the danger at a level where it is too much for anybody to deal with. And that's great. That's a great, great slash terrible place for our heroes to be in. So to jump into it, uh, Nick wakes up. He is chained in the center of which school? This is kind of a nice black uh, snake moan moment where, you know, Nick is shirtless, chained to a radiator, just kind of going through the withdrawals. <laughs> black snake doing- moan. Yeah. Oh, my God. I have what a, I mean, I have not heard anybody talk about that movie in, I want to say, 15 years, 10 years, something like that. At least it was it was ridiculous. Uh, you know, at just like the, the start of the show, just having Nick just be kind of like chained to the floor. With his shirt ripped. Uh, 
Nick, it, she's just so casual. Nick, you got high and released the Dark Lord. I, oh, I, you crazy bean. I wrote this down, too, because this was such a great expository line from Sabrina. Yeah. Nick, do you have any idea what you've done? You got high, freed the Dark Lord, <laughs> then passed out. <laughs> it's like, and now we're into the episode. This is oh, what you're going to get ready for. Yeah. Like, great. Unbelievable. Uh, you silly goose. You got high and released the Dark Lord and then passed out. Right. So they've got three days before the pagans get there, but they need all the power they can get. They need all the witches and warlocks they can get. So Ambrose says, okay, normally it would take like 30 days to clean them up from what just went on. But instead, we're going to use this time egg that we got from Loch Dax and speed up time and a time bubble around him. So no yeah, big. It's, it's the old merman's time egg that they just happened upon. That The super old helpful. merman's time egg. Yep. And it was hilarious because, like, Madame Satan was like, oh, man, if only. And Sabrina's just like, well, actually, I have a time egg. <laughs> <laughs> Madame Satan's like, well, look at you. Yeah. Oh, weird. You have the one thing that I just asked for, which normally <laughs> I would say, and this is jumping ahead to that scene, but normally I would say this is Lilith manipulating everybody. And I still feel like that's a possibility. I still feel like she's got plans in the background, but it definitely feels like everybody is behind the ball. Except yeah. for maybe the pagans who are all over it. Like, they're ahead of everybody, but everybody else doesn't know what's going on. Right. But it's hard to tell Sabrina's behind the ball because she's super cash. Yes. Behind the ball is the right thing, right? It's not like that's when you're behind. That's the sports metaphor. I think so, yeah. Okay. Because suddenly I was like, oh, if you're behind the ball, maybe you're the team who's about to play. Don't overthink it, Okay, dude. don't overthink it too much. No. Okay, so they're going to use the time egg. Nick tells Sabrina he hates her, and Sabrina's like, okay, whatever. Uh, and Ambrose then goes into his whole recap. He's like, here's what's going on with Dorcas, Agatha, the Pagans, and the Dark Lord. And then we're kind of out of almost out of the recap section, except that Sabrina has to go visit her human friend. She's like, whoa, right. what happened to Roz? She goes, oh, yeah. Oh, I, guys, I've got to go check on my human friends. Oh, now you're going to now you're going to check in, Sabrina. Right. When, it, when it's super casual time to do stuff like that. Right. After uh, somehow Aunt Hilda's blanket didn't work on Roz. Didn't work. <laughs> It wasn't even a magical blanket. It wasn't even it's like just a very warm looking blanket. <laughs> by you. one she made herself. Yes. Uh, so Sabrina finds out Roz has been turned to stone. She fills in Harvey and Theo about everything that's going on. And Sabrina makes a very dumb pro- promise, which is like, don't worry, I'll take care of Roz. And they're like, thanks, Sabrina. And yeah, then super I'm, cash. I'm she su- sees Roz for the first time. She's like, oh, the old, oh, another statue person. Yeah. Uh, it's not like I care about her. OK, well, guys, Roz is going to be cool. I'll be back. You just hang tight. Bye. And Sabrina doesn't even come back with a blanket or anything, which I feel no. like would have been nice. <laughs> yeah, no blanket. Blankets for Roz is my charity. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and then, in the middle of all this, Lilith goes up and is like, hey, Sabrina, it's time for the second challenge of the Unholy Regalia. Oh, yeah. And Sabrina is like, no. <laughs> I don't have the time. <laughs> she tells the Lords of Hell. Like, the Lords of Hell are like, can't do it, soups, biz. <laughs> it's the amount, like, we we talked about this the last episode as well, but the level of Sabrina's uh, priorities, and I understand there's a lot going on, but running hell, which is an entire dimension, should probably not go last. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Uh, but the Lords of Hell, they go directly to the witch school, reveal that she's Queen of Hell. So everybody is up to speed on e- pretty much everything everybody at this point. Uh, yeah. they, the, but there's no time for that. But there's no, no time, time for anybody to be upset or any time for someone to say something. No, no time. Uh, but I do like what happens here, which they do challenge her. They say, she has to find Pontius Pilate's bowl. Lilith, right. like, and then so, Lilith lays it out to her. She's like, everything that's going on right now is because you screwed up, Serena. Because you rejected the throne of hell, everything is out of whack. It's your fault. And this, yeah, to me, is the point where the cracks start to form in Sabrina. And, yeah, she's like, that, that, that's not true. Yeah, so it's nice to see that a little bit on her face to finally kind of react to stuff like that. Um, but it was funny the way they were like, punch his pie, it's bowl. And I was like, are they saying bowl or ball? They're being super casual about this. Like, <laughs> what are they getting? Did you think it was Pontius Pilate's ball? Yeah, yeah, I did. Like a ball that he like a ball he was behind. 
like he was behind the ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. He sat like he had lost his ball, and you got to help him find it. Oh, okay. Maybe like it got stuck on the roof when he was playing in the backyard. Oh, that's the worst. That is the worst. Yeah. Uh, so Zelda then backs up Lilith. Nice little Madam Spellman, I believe is the ship name there. Yeah. A moment going on where Zelda says, uh, Sabrina, you got to do this for the coven. That is your Alpha and Omega that is going on right now. And Lilith says, you got to go to Golgotha to the place of skulls. It's where the bowl is. And she reveals that it's locked in a time loop. And as you mentioned, luckily, Sabrina just happens to have a time egg and some time yep. water. And also, and then, hey, what were you going to say? She's like, hey, oh, man, I'm saying also, could you just teleport me there? Because, like, I've got a lot going on. So no time. Yeah. But luckily, as we've established at this part, uh, Dorian Gray, who runs a club in town. He's got a portal. Gringo, he's got a portal and a painting for everything. He's got a portal to hell. He's got an yep. angel in a painting. He's got a portal to go Gotha. What doesn't this guy have portals to? Man, you want to talk about one-stop shopping at this Dorian's house. It's yeah. crazy. He's got everything covered. You want uh, an angel tapped? Go to Dorian's. You yep. want torture sex demons? Go to Dorian's. You want a pimple cure? Don't go to Dorian's. He's having Don't a big go problem to with Dorian's. That. He has no idea how to help you. He does not know what Clearasil is. He has and not then found out. Also, about. running theme Hilda starts to break out crazy. And I'm just like, man, this is just like an ad for Clearasil at this point. Mm-hmm. They, they should do the thing where they're like slow mo dancing around. What is it? <laughs> it's not Activa, it's the other thing with the A. Uh, you know. Uh, Jessica, Jessica Simpson uses it. That's my current <laughs> reference. <laughs> well, anyway, no uh, as you were mentioning with Hilda, we start to get a bunch of weirdness with her. She's tracking down flies in Zelda's office. Sabrina's like, okay, weird. Can't deal with this right now. Yeah, please. yeah that was driving me nuts, too. I was like, please just really listen to one person, Sabrina. Just stop and listen to one person. No, she's a shark. She's got to keep going. Yeah, she does. She lives by ABC. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Hilda eats the fly. First hint we get that she's definitely turning into a spider person. First uh, catches it bare hands. I mean, you know, spell or not, that's still some important. Impressive reflexes. Yeah. And just to be clear, it's not like the cool type of spider person that's in the movies. It's like mm-hmm. a horrific type of spider person. But if you could rank them... Of the spider people, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, and Hilda, where would where would they go? Uh, well, you, you got to put Hilda last because she's like, we right now she's eating insects and mm-hmm. maybe slowing turning in, so we haven't seen her full powers yet. So, oh, okay, because we don't know if she gets powers or anything yet. She's at the bottom. Oh, interesting. She, Wait, yeah, who's just, at the top? You can for say you? whatever you want about you know Andrew Garfield. You know, at least he was Spider Man, had the powers. He was he was a good Peter Parker. He was a good Spider Man. You, you say that, but you throw him under the bus a lot. You know what? I would put Anne Hilda over Tobey Maguire. Good for you. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. <laughs> I uh, would not. Oh. I would not. He was a better Gar- uh, Spider Man. He was a uh, better Garfield, Garfield than Spider Man. I agree yeah. with that. Toby Maguire was an excellent <laughs> Garfield. He, uh, the way that he ate lasagna, just oh, like he hates flipping Mondays, it. and he hates Mondays. Hates, hates them. He established that pretty clearly during Cider House Rules. That was one of the Cider House Rules. We hate Mondays. The second one was we love lasagna. He hates Mondays more than nor- normal and more than Odie. Yeah, and we know that he hates both those things. Yes. And just to be clear, you were saying Nermal, the cat that he hates, not normal. Right. I was trying to say Nermal, but I kind of stumbled. Just clarifying for our listeners who may not know anything about Garfield, a very old cat. It's too, it's too bad. You should check it out. Yeah. Very funny stuff. Very funny. Uh, or check out the movies with Bill Murray, which are also, uh, they exist. Yeah, but, yeah, but I mean, the comics were, were funny. All right, let's 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 get back to the show. Uh, so uh, Robin enters. Harvey's like, yo, get this dude out of here. He doesn't know what uh, should be going on. Uh, and then back to Prudence and Ambrose, who are trying to find out what happened to Agatha. They read her mind. There's a nice little magic thing here. I like this, yeah. where Prudence is reading Agatha's mind, but it's all jumbled up. And Prudence yeah, she is says like, it's like a tsunami, which was really cool. Yeah, and uh, Ambrose says, don't try to sort through it. Just slow it down. Just slow it down. And I like that. Like, I like that. I thought that was a neat take on magic. 
That's good life advice right there, Ambrose is dishing out. Yeah, and they find out what Roz has known for several episodes so far and not told anybody, not just because she's a statue, uh, but that Carcosa, the guy who runs the carnival, is actually the great god Pan. And yeah. Ambrose explains that, oh, of course, the great god Pan traditionally drove people insane and not just with his sweet flute licks. Yeah, and what what's uh, nice is finally someone's reacting to the uh, creepy carnival people that have been just murdering their way through the town. Finally, Ambrose is like, holy crap, we're in trouble. And, you know, it's going to be making moves. Yeah. Then we go back to Lilith and Sabrina. Uh, they jump through the portal. Uh, Sabrina dumps some time water on her, gets much less wet than I expected. She just does like a couple of dribbles. Hey, all you need is a couple of dribbles oh, and okay. it clears up your skin. Uh, but she has a fun moment there where she's like, oh, wait, how do I know if it worked? Looks up. Creepy skull path. So, you know, it worked. Yeah. And then Pontius Pilate is there and a centurion seizes her. And we'll get back to her in a moment. Uh, Ooh, over to geez. two other of the main characters of the show, Elsbeth and Melvin. Uh, they are sitting in the desert. Bunch of quitters. Yeah, they are a bunch of critters. Not critters. Quitter. <laughs> They're a bunch of little critters. And I'm going to hunt them down and I'm going to skid them. Uh, Elsbeth oh. and Melvin <laughs> contemplate leaving to join the pagans when the Dark Lord as Blackwood, and he's got a little bit of a creepy makeover so that his beard looks like yeah. the Dark Lord. What'd you think about he's, that, Pete? He's super upset. Yeah, I don't know about his look right now, but he's super upset uh, that everybody ditched him. You know, and he's not calling favorites. He's upset at humans, witches, er, buddy. Yeah. Uh, And he says, my children go to the pagans. It's too late. But clearly he doesn't really. He clearly he's testing them. Man, Satan always pulling tricks. You know what? I'm starting to feel like we shouldn't trust Satan. Oh, wow. How many seasons did that take? Uh, 2.43 part of a part of a half. One and a half. Not even one and a quarter. Why is that so complicated? I know. I don't know why you don't get it. Ugh. So Ambrose discovers Dorcas is still in the uh, stone. She's trapped in there and alive, and there's still hope that she can come back and save everybody. Because we all know if you hit something with a tuning fork, they're not dead. Well, that's what I always do. Yeah. I always carry a tuning fork with me, and I'm always hitting people with it. I'm like, not dead. Yeah, well, especially when you got kids. you got to hit them all the time and make sure they're not dead. Uh, definitely going to edit that out of the episode. Uh <laughs> <laughs> thing about hitting kids all the time. Uh, so they realize, though, that from Dorcas being a statue, that what they could do is they can kind of ma- do a makeshift, excuse me, makeshift stone yeah, edit this part out, too. Yeah, and we're going to edit the entire podcast out. None of this is <laughs> usable. Uh, take some stone hedge power and create a circle of stones. Which was really awesome. I love the way it looked. The whole sound of it, that was a really great spell. You know, like sometimes when you're watching like mag- magic shows and they're kind of going through the spell, it can be kind of like, all right, what's going to happen? But this was really cool, the setup of that. Uh, I will say, and I think we're going to get out of this pretty soon, but I do feel like we're starting to get into this rhythm here with the episodes where Ambrose is like, I have an idea how we can get our power back. And they get very close and then they lose it. And we had that yeah. with the crown. We had that with the moon with the circle. Moon. Yeah. And then we yeah. get it with Stonehenge this episode. So I hope this feels like the last ditch effort. So I think we're out of that mode. Um, but I hope we don't see the same thing next episode. I feel like that would be uh, that would start to feel pretty repetitive. It makes point. me a little worried when you say we're starting to get in rhythm because this show was insane <laughs> and the r- rhythm was way too fast. Well, it's like the rhythm of jazz where they're like, skiddle bop bop doop bop bop Stop. Please don't ever do that. ski bop bop Stop. skiddle bop Why? Uh, you should check out my scat band, by the way. Oh, my We're God. We're called the Dorkabatrods. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Zelda, name. meanwhile, is upset about their waning powers. Hilda spits out a web, I think. From her mouth and grab uh, some food or something? No, that was a frog tongue. She that was, was a kind frog of like, tongue. 
Yeah, it was kind of like an insect tongue move where she grabbed the cookie and put it in her mouth. Okay, frogs, not insects, but I get what you're saying. Anyway, uh, they decide they're going to summon the, the disenfranchised witches, the hedge witches. They don't use that term in the episode, but that's what they are. Uh, and uh, try to get them to help out. Maybe they'll still have some power, or at least they can all band together, which is a very proactive plan from Zelda's. Yeah, it's kind of like what they did in Star Wars. You know, They were like, hey, we'll just send out a signal. Oh, yeah. And that worked out pretty well for them. Yep. And I guess we're going to find out somebody is secretly somebody's grandfather. Spoiler for Star Wars. Oh, man. But we'll see what happens. We'll uh, see what H- happens. Hilda, at that point, realizes she's turning into a spider. Uh, then we go back to the time loop where Caliban is already is, locked up. Wait, wait. You think she's turning into a spider? I thought she was turning into a fly. No, I think it's like a spider person, right? I don't know. She has all. Oh, I guess spiders have all the eyes too. Yeah, they have com- compound eyes. They have compound yeah. eyes, and I mean, I guess she could be turning into a fly of some sort. I but thought, it certainly seems like had, a spider. I thought she had fly eye, and everything looks dope. <laughs> so, you're, if it was the same eye, but it was spider eye, would that not be dope? Yeah, yep. No. Oh, all right. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Jumping back to this time loop, as mentioned, Caliban already locked up, and a third prisoner named Barabbas is there, and he reveals that Pontius Pilate is making them relive the same passion play, essentially, over and over again, where the other prisoners get crucified, Barabbas gets freed by the crowd that left a long time ago, uh, and he's very sad about it. Yeah. I'm just uh, a little worried, like, why would someone want to live in a time loop? You know what I mean? Well, because for Pontius Pilate, this is the best day of his life, right? Yeah. I think. I guess. I got to be honest. I didn't look it up, and I don't really know the story of Pontius Pilate. So I don't know how closely this necessarily hues. Pete, this is more in your religious lines. How close is it? Uh, I don't know. But I did (laughs) think it was like... Not the greatest day. I mean, he was basically in front of a crowd. Understand that. Love doing crowd work. But then it's like, hey, we should probably murder one of these people. And then the crowd's really into that. And then he washes his hands, and that's the greatest day? I will say, on the note of crowd work, if you were stuck in a time loop, you could really work out a very good tight five. Okay. Over the course of 2,000 years. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, you could crush that thing. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, we get a great scene. I think this may have actually been my favorite scene in the episode because I love this callback. So there's these jocks, these Baxter High jocks. Oh, you talking about when bros attack? When bros attack. Is that what you yeah. called it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they go out to Robin. They steal his hat and they start bullying him. But then Theo walks up and is like, hey, leave him alone. And the jocks are like, all right. We're gone. We're out of here. Like, oh, Theo. Oh, my bad. Didn't know he was with you. Yeah. And we, I completely forgot about that. That was one of the best plot lines for the last season where Theo was initially bullied by these jocks, but ultimately they ended up being totally accepting of him and understanding of him in a really great way. Yeah. Cause she schooled them all in basketball and then they're like, oh, okay. Theo's cool. Right. And then there was also somebody threatened them. I think it was Anne Hilda threatened them. Yeah. As well. So uh, that was great. That callback was great. And then we get a nice conversation with Theo and Robin where Theo talks about transitioning and how they were actually surprisingly cool with it. And his dad was surprisingly cool with it after a little while, an adjustment period. And Robin won't. Yeah, Robin almost uh, like unleashed some kind of weird spell. We almost got to see a little bit behind the curtain of who Robin is and what is capable of. How are you feeling about Robin after this episode, Pete? Well, there's a little bit of a window for some sunshine, but Robin has really been kind of uh, two-faced, and I haven't appreciated uh, Robin's moves. So I get a sense here that he is looking for that escape hatch, and I really like that move because the initial relationship with Theo and Robin was so sweet and so nice, and Mm. it is such a punch in the gut to have Robin turn out to be evil and working with the carnies. Um, So that that was a twist, but they're almost twisting it back. And Robin wants to be redeemed. I like that move. I think that's a smarter move than having Robin be abjectly evil like the rest of the pagans. 
I I also think it's a smart move, and I hope that's what actually is going to happen. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, back of the time loop, uh, Pontius Pilate said... Back in said, the time loop. Back in the time loop again. Uh, I probably could have gone for let's do the time loop again, but you know what? Let's okay. not make things easy. So okay. Caliban tells Sabrina he's going to take lashes for her. Pontius Pilate is going to lash somebody. Because he's made of clay. And we start to get a little uh, Cabrina going on here. A little You're Cabrina. You're too cute for scars. Yeah. All right. I mean, that's, uh, you know. How are you feeling about this? We got a rare triple ship going on in the show. Yeah, got but she Brino. does like a little look. She does like a little a little look like mm-hmm. she's thinking about it. And not to keep asking you rankers, but I will because I love them, Pete. Cabrina, Hubrina, and Nubrina at the current time. Where are you feeling? Where are you putting them? One, two, uh, three. I don't know, man. I still feel like Hubrina is the way to go. Ooh, Hubrina number one. Where's Cabrina, though? Two. Two, Nabrina falling to number three on the Abrina countdown. Yeah. That's big, folks. And we'll be right back after these commercial messages <laughs> with Ryan Seacrest. Actually, not. He's not allowed on this show. All right, let's uh, let's jump forward. Uh, Sabrina, as Caliban is being lashed, starts to make a plan with Barabbas, and then it's back to She's Elsbeth like, and me May- Melvin. Everything. What? I love when she was like, tell me everything. I'm like, ooh, she's got a plan. Yeah, that's great. It's great. It's sucky that Sabrina always pushes forward, but you know what? She comes up with plans. She knows what she's doing sometimes. She loves when a plan comes together. And then we get an awful scene for one of the main characters of the show. Elspeth and Melvin go to the Pagans Oh, man. They say, ah, the time of the green god is nigh. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. And your blood will consecrate this ground. And they kill Elsbeth. Yeah. Dead. I I gotta tell you, I mean, I know we joke about the main characters and stuff, but it's a real bummer to see Elsbeth killed off. Yeah, yeah. But... Melvin runs. <laughs> He's not Just sticking around to get it. stabbed. He's like, I'm out. And even scarier, the pagans don't even follow him. They don't care. Yeah. They know no, they're no. going to get all of them eventually. They're old gods, man. They ain't going to run. Yeah. They're Carcosa. Uh, and meanwhile, Blackwood Lucifer is lurking in the background and says that all the humans and witches deserve to die for betraying him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we're back in that time loop again. Back in the time loop again. Again, went for the went for the harder one there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, P- Pontius Pilate does his little play, and when Barabbas is freed, he grabs the ball, and it turns out he switched with Sabrina. They did a little glamour move there. Yeah, but Caliban also distracted. That was super cool. Caliban distracted them. Yeah, really? Because he like started to pull on his chain, and they all looked, and then they did the switch. Oh. It was well choreographed. Interesting. I don't think he was in on it, though. I think that was a happy coincidence. Okay. I think so, because then he gets stuck there for 2,000 years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so he says. I mean, it was really only like 20 minutes. <laughs> of showtime? Yeah. That's what he should have said. He was like, I was trapped there for 20 minutes of showtime. Of running time. But <laughs> for me, it was like two Gs. Two Gs. Uh, yeah, so uh, Lilith doesn't really care, does, says it doesn't matter that Caliban is stuck. But Sabrina, of course, is kind of upset about it. She's like, yeah, we, she's kinda, little... we got to go back for him. But she doesn't try that hard. No, but she is a little moved. She's a little touched. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other thing she does, which is bonkers, and I can't believe this happened, and I also can't believe it worked out, is she says, no, I'm not bringing the bowl back to hell. I'm taking it to my coven. Yeah, but what was great about that was like Madam Satan's face. Like she was like, "Oh, oh, okay, all right." It's and that was yeah. If you're in the middle of a scavenger hunt, bring the things back. Don't yeah. bring them to a second location. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Never uh, go with the heavy second location. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Uh, Hilda, meanwhile, presses an enormous zit and it squeezes out spiders. Uh-huh. I think. Yeah. Horrifying. I don't like that. No. Not a fan at all. Uh, she's also got the compound eyes at that point, as we mentioned. Uh, and then the Dark Lord 
approaches Harvey of all people and tempts him and tells him that he should go to the carnival with his buddies and beat up the heathens. Uh, meanwhile, Robin and Theo make out a little bit. Robin explains that his family moved around a bunch. He says they yeah. were military. I'm very happy that Theo was like aware that like, hey, this dude's not, you know, Robin's not opening up. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, she she's a little cautious about her. Uh, Theo was feeling like, you know. He is. He is. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Theo is. I liked the fact that like Theo was. Uh, I want to hear more information before I'm going to, you know, like let my guard down around. I did like that as well. And I like the relationship. I like the, like I said earlier, I like the way this is going and it's interesting to watch it develop. Uh, Meanwhile, Ambrose and the Coven do a summoning. Sabrina is there with a bowl. The Dark Lord enters, frees Agatha and gives her a sledgehammer, at which point. Sledgehammer. uh, I had a heart attack starting worrying about Dorcas there. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Yeah. But uh, luckily, Ambrose uses the stones to call the hedge witches. In the middle of that, Agatha enters, breaks the stones, reveals the Dark Lord was there. They tackle her down. She does not get Dorcas. Yeah. So Dorcas is safe to fight another day. And then Melvin enters and explains that the pagans killed Elsbeth. Uh, and everybody's like, well, everything is going wrong at this point. Don't worry, things go even more wrong very soon uh, because the jocks go to trash the carnival, lights flash. That's when the bros attack. The bros attack, when bros attack. uh, The fortune teller touches the boy and turns them to pigs. And at this point... Now, first off, when someone creepily gets off a Ferris wheel like that, you don't just go along with them. That was like one of the... Most badass things that they were just like, oh, okay, cool. It's, I mean, it was a carousel, which is pretty badass. If somebody is tumbling off a Ferris wheel, they're looking like an idiot. So (laughs) very different Yeah, sorry, carousel. Also, I'm just going to throw this out here. I might be misremembering this story, but at this point, the same way that Carcosa is Pan, I'm assuming the fortune teller is Circe, who I believe turned the sailors into pigs in the Odyssey, right? Sure. Great. All right. I'll look that up later, see if we have to do it. Yeah, I mean, if only we had a classically trained actor with us. Uh, Good thing we don't here on Dorcas Dish. They're (laughs) not welcome. Uh, Then we go back to the school. Nick gets worse. The leeches they're using to bleed him out are all dead. Ambrose cuts them open and they ooze. And this is the point they realize he's full of venom. 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 Yeah. And... Uh, uh, we get a quick scene of Robin and Theo discovering Harvey, uh, and we find out definitively the woman has turned them into pigs. Uh, but what Ambrose discovers, as you mentioned earlier, is there's Satan's residue in Nick. He describes it as like tar in the lungs, and they realize they can entice it out with Sabrina's blood. Now, what do you think about this move? Because we felt like, and they even stated pretty explicitly that Nick was just going through PTSD. But now we get an actual supernatural explanation for his behavior. How do you feel about that move? Well, first off, we got back up the truck a little bit. The shot of Harvey sitting in the back of a pickup truck with a bunch of pigs. Mm-hmm. And when they run up on him, they're like, are you all right? And he's just like, he turned him into pigs. And he's just sitting there. Was hysterical. Okay. Why is uh, that hysterical? Because he's sitting in the back of a pickup truck, and all of his bros got turned into pigs. It was I mean, hysterical. I thought that was pretty sad for him. All of his <laughs> friends got turned into pigs. Yeah, but it's just—I it just I can't. I also can't tell from your inflection whether you're more upset about if you think the pigs are funnier or sitting in the back of a pickup truck is funnier. Well, that's the thing. Like he's just sitting there, and he's dumbfounded. He doesn't know what to do. And I thought it was kind of hilarious. I guess, I mean, the reason I think he's sitting there dumbfounded is the Dark Lord entranced him, and he's just breaking out of that. He's like, how did I get here with four pigs in the back of my pickup truck? What is going on with me right now? I think he was just like, "Um, my bros are pigs, and I don't know how to cope. My bros are pigs, and all my enemies are in power. (laughs) <laughs> uh, let's get back to the episode. Uh, so Sabrina slices her palms, which you and I have talked about 
ad nausea is a very weird place to slice yourself. Yeah. Uh, but she does it anyway. The blood sucks the last of Lucifer out. And I even put a note here. It's funny that you said it. But I was like, it sucks out the last of Lucifer. It's Venom. Yeah, I wrote it's ve- I wrote Venom, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Straight up Venom. Uh, but as we know from the movie Venom, if you dunk a symbiote into holy water, it traps them. Oh, yeah. Yes. And then you got to put the top over like a pie and that's they can't get out of that. Yeah, I'm really hoping Woody Harrelson shows up next episode as Carnage because that would oh, be super sweet. That would, that would be sick. Uh, Zelda and Hilda talk a little bit about the pagans. Hilda tries to explain that something is happening to her, but Zelda isn't listening. Yeah, but she does. Like there was this fun back and forth where what she says because uh, Zelda's just going on a rant and not really listening. But this part, I was like, Hilda, you have to spell this out for her. Please, for the love of God, say something to somebody. Yes. You, and this is the point where you got to not mince words and say, I am turning into a spider human. Yeah. Uh, and then they'll be like, oh, which one? Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland. Right. But we have a uh, we have a fix for that, though. You know what I mean? You got to share with your sister. Yeah, exactly. I think that does come down to a lot of what is happening this season is they're oversharing details, but not sharing emotionally what's going on with them. And that's probably partially why they're ending up in this mess. Uh, So Ambrose, though, says, hey, you know what? I got this satanic residue. I can do a little something something with this. Uh, And while he's figuring out what to do, we get another second episode in a row agonizing conversation with Nick. Yeah, but I would like to point out, though, that that was like crazy where it was like Ambrose is like, hey, are you going to use this Satan residue? Because I've got some ideas for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ambrose, you can have that. No problem, bro. He always does. And their ideas always come down to rub us down with this stuff. Yeah. I guess in this case, they don't. They just create like a border or something like well, that. Well, he put some stuff in the water that she had to dump all over herself. So, right. Which is different than the time water she had to dump all over herself. So lots of water dumping and oozing. And and then the oil for the moonlight that everybody had to rub on themselves. Right. Basically, if you find something weird in Witch World, rub yourself down with it. <laughs> what would Dorcas rub on herself? That's oh, uh, that's what I have on my anklet. Smart. I have that. Yeah. Smart. Um, down to one ankle that's totally free right now. We'll see if that gets filled up by the end of this episode. Uh, but Nick wakes up. He's ashamed. Sabrina thinks, great, we can go back to the way things were. All those mean things you said to me weren't you. They were actually my dad, which is pretty creepy and awful. Yeah. Uh, but Nick can't do it. He doesn't know if it was him or the Dark Lord. and he Which needs- is understandable. I feel like what Nick yeah. is saying is like, hey, listen, I've just been through so much shit. I need a little time. I got to figure out who I am. And then, you know, maybe. But she keeps being like, no, we're back to where we were. This is no big deal. We're back to where we were. Well, this is one of the things that I think makes this show work is in between all the craziness. They do have these very emotionally true scenes like this one with Sabrina and Nick, where Sabrina's perspective of we got rid of the thing. We got rid of the problem in the relationship. Great. We can just pick up right where we were. But to your point, Nick can't. There's no way that he could. And he also lays something out on her that I don't think she's realized yet that I thought was an interesting move as well, where he says, Sabrina's like, I'll risk it all for you. And Nick tells her, no, No, you're chasing power. You're the queen of hell. I'll just slow you down. And I think that works on the level of that's the sort of thing you say during a breakup when you're putting it on the other person, like I'm doing this for you. But I also think he's right. Well, I think he is right. And I think that she has other feelings that she's not addressing, but also like, you know, there's nothing wrong when someone goes through a ton of shit to just like, take a little break from a little bit. You know what I mean? He's not saying like, but the part where she was like, kiss me. And he's like, if I do, I'll never be able to walk away. Like, Oh my God. Yeah. Rough Such stuff. a great line. Yeah, and then they break up. They are broken up. Yeah. Nabrina is no more. Something yeah, we've been speculating she, about it. Like he as he leaves, then she whispers super quietly, I love you. Felt like that was a little late. Mm-hmm. But then Madam Satan immediately appears. 
Sabrina's got to set up some boundaries, like when Madam Satan can like just be le- looming over her. Like, damn, was she there the whole time and saw that whole thing go down? Being a queen is a twenty four seven job that involves going on scavenger hunts and occasionally dragging souls to hell. All right, it's a very busy schedule. Yeah, and then there was the Madam Satan doing the old League of Their Own. Like, there's no crying. You, there, are you crying? There's no crying when you're the queen of hell. Yeah, well, she's definitely, there's no crying in queen ball, and she's definitely behind the queen ball at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so all of that is going on. They're broken up, and then she goes down to hell, uh, and finally they bring the bowl back, which I was like, Jesus Christ, thank you for doing that, yeah. finally. Uh, and then we get a very creepy scene at Dr. C's store, Hilda enters, and she keeps flipping back and forth between awful looking spider face and regular or fly face. face. What? Or, or fly, fly face. face. I guess we'll find out what kind of bug it is later. I mean, it seemed like she had some green tint to her. Could have been. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe she's turning into some sort of, I can't think of a third bug, beetle. She's turning into a beetle. <laughs> there you go. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, I was pretty scared here for Dr. C, but luckily yeah. it's just a hug and that's it. Uh, and then we are in hell. Sabrina and Lilith return the ball, say victory is complete. Caliban is gone, except he walks in shirtless and dirty. Yeah. And like super good timing by Sabrina. You imagine if he got back and Sabrina hadn't brought the bowl back. Yeah. He would have been like, um, she sat it for like 2000 years, guys. Now, this is something I wanted to ask about when we were talking about the Nick breakup conversation. Now that Nick and Sabrina are broken up and half of Haas or Rarvi or whatever we're calling it, yeah. uh, one of them is a statue. Does that make way for Habrina to be back on, well, well, or easy, are man. we getting Cabrina? Well, the thing about Cabrina is, like, that was a hell of an entrance when he walks in all dirty and gives that, like, hey, listen, I've been gone for 2,000 years, but it doesn't look like it. What's up? <laughs> What's up? That was a pretty sweet move. Uh, and you know what? I said this last episode, I'm still sticking by it. I could see them having one of those, I hate you, I hate you, yeah. pause, make out sesh. Yeah. I think it's going to happen. We'll see what happens. Uh, so uh, Lilith then gets casually oh. told. The it's just so funny. Like, oh, oh, man, I'm saying, I'm so sorry. It slipped my mind. Yeah, the Dark Lord's been free this whole time. Right. My and she freaks out because the Dark yeah. Lord is going to kill her. <laughs> like, yeah. she's straight up. She stole the throne. She manipulated everything. He is definitely going to kill her. Uh, so that's pretty messed up for her. Uh, and then back on Earth, while they're dealing with that, Ambrose makes a warding resin and says, okay, I think this should keep the pagans out a little bit. And then all the hedge witches show up and they threaten to kill the Spellmans. And that's yeah. where they end the episode. Which was great. The classic fight before a team up. I love it. You know, the witches were like, hey, uh, why'd you summon us? And then hang up so abruptly, guys. Super rude. Yeah. And I like this. I like meeting all of these head witches. I'm excited to see what happens with all of them. They all look very weird and some of them super gross. And again, we have several episodes left to go, but this just keeps ramping up and ramping up and ramping up this season in a very big way. It's too fast. It's too fast. We got to slow it down. Yeah. Too fast, too first. Yep. They got to Tokyo drift a little bit and just. Yeah, they do. Throw that e brake, peel it around (laughs) the corner. You know what I mean? Before we wrap up here, Pete, which witch reigns supreme this episode for you? Wow. Wow. This was a tough one. This was a tough one. There was so much crazy things that happened. Um, uh, people were all over the place. I felt so bad for Hilda, you know, and she like all she wanted was a hug from Dr. C and it was beautiful. But I'm going to have to go with Ambrose because Hilda was keeping it, I feel like, too much of a secret. She needs to let people in. So mm-hmm. I'm going Ambrose. Yeah. I, like we've been saying, pretty much everybody is just playing catch up here and losing one after the other. 
I want to go for Dorcas just because she stood so steady and strong all she episode was, long. Uh, this is obviously other than Dorcas. Because, sure. Like, yeah, that, Dorcas, that's what I'm saying. I yes. mean, that's the easy answer. There's that's no a question. Given. It's a given. Yeah, she but, was a rock in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm actually going to have to give it to Sabrina. You know, she's dealing with a lot. Super cash Sabrina, you're going to give it to? Super cash Sabrina. No she way. makes moves in the time bubble. She gets some time water and dumps it on her head. She catches Venom, which is something that nobody in the movie Venom could do. Yeah, that's true. She's super <laughs> So that's pretty caught. cool. Yeah. Uh, so she's dealing with a lot, but she's actually moving some balls forward this episode a yard or two. Nice. You know what? I, I'll tell you what. I'm done with the sports metaphors. I just can't do them. I'm sorry. <laughs> Folks, if you want to support this podcast, patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, we do a live show every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. at the People's Improv Theater Loft in New York. Come on by. We will chat with you about Time Eggs or Literally whatever you want to chat about Merman. Socially we don't have Sabrina dedicated channels But you can check out our Riverdale channels Which are Twitter is Riverdale Dark Instagram is Riverdale After And on Facebook Riverdale After Dark uh, Also iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher Or the app of your choice Please comment on iTunes On Chilling Podcasts of Sabrina That helps us out quite a bit And of course we really appreciate it Comic Book Club live.com for this podcast and more and we'll see you next time for way more Dorcas Dish Dorcas Dish Ooh, you should lay down that track